Hello and welcome to this Saturday edition of The Box Seat. I'm Mark Olmus, joined by Mark Wald. Mark, great to have you back with us. Same, Mark. Now, we've got a really good day of racing here. Eight races to take a look at, including the Group 2 Ted Van Hemp Stakes. Group 2, wait for age level, over 2,100 metres. Looks to be the feature on the card. Absolute ripper of a race, the main leading race at the Tap Touch Perth Cup. Yeah, really looking forward to it. Before we get stuck into the program, we'll have a look at the weather and track conditions. The rail will be out three metres, and we're expecting a very sunny day, 33 degrees, perfect for racing with not too much wind. Let's get stuck into the card now. Race number one is the McFarland Plumbing Handicap over 1,600 metres. It's a graduation race, Mark, and there looks to be a lot of differing form lines. Yes, yeah, certainly. I'll, we're going to look at the replay of Jaspara, second behind Astromanite at Ascot last time out. Two lengths major detail. Homeward bound at the 300. Excellently again goes to a clear lead. Pike goes to work on Astronomite. Jaspara comes down the outside. There's a run for pre selection. Jaspara, Astronomite, head and head at the 100. Jaspara. On the outside, coming back, Astronomite. Astronomite regains the lead, and Pike gets his double L. A really nice performance there by Jaspara. Almost looked as if it was going to go past Astronomite in the straight, but uh, Astronomite kicked on. Still a nice performance moving forward, though. Certainly a nice performance when you look at what Astronomite did next time out. Um, I've got in on top, Jaspara. Best figures in its career last time. I think it's going to take a hell of a lot of beating. Certainly an improving type. We've also got number six in there, Point. Gelding by High Chaparral uh, out of the Grant and Alana Williams stable. Trey are uh, owned by Bob Peters rather. Second up here should be suited. Yeah, look, high chaparral, expected to uh, get better over a further distance. That's why I haven't got it on top here. Respect it because of the connections, but I think it's probably going to want 1,800 plus. The other one who was eye-catching last start, Indy Pacific from the Alan Matthews Yard. Didn't have too much luck on Wednesday with Riverdance going uh, amiss there and finding trouble, but uh, this looks to be a very suitable race, especially from the good barrier mark. I've got it very closely rated to number six. I've got number six on top because of the improvement we expect to see from it, but very good sectionals last 200 and 400 last time out. Yeah, my selections, I'm going with the six on top point, second up here. Looks to be very full with this preparation. Ahead of number three, Jaspara. Mark did mention the good times and numbers that that gallopers had. The four, Gloryland, I think can lead again. And with Stephen Parnham back aboard, she'll be able to run a cheeky race. And the seven, Indy Pacific. I've got number three on top, that's Jaspara from number six, point number seven, Indy Pacific. And number nine, See Me Sizzle. Race number two at Ascot is the Tab Touch Perth Cup 31 December plate. It's over 1,200 metres for the three-year-old. And the replay horse was a mighty impressive winner last start with an Eastern States jockey aboard, Mark. Yeah, Tim Clark rode three winners on Winter Bottom Stakes Day, the first of which was Slick Sam. Speedy Laditi, Dainty Tess cutting back inside their heels, finding the fence. Further back, Badge of Courage and then Delaney. At the 200, Slick Sam raced up to I Am Incredible. A length and a half, Verve de Viga coming again. Speedy Laditi down the outside, Badge of Courage and Fairy Whisper. It's Slick Sam in front. They're coming, they're closing, they hit it. It's Slick Sam. A really sharp turn of speed there late by the Simon Miller train galloper. They don't often go off at that price, $16, Mark. No, they certainly don't. If, uh, if that yard fancies them, they're normally not that price. Tim Clark rode three on that day, and, and that was the first one. It was very impressive. It's won, three of its, oh, it's won two of its three races. Probably had excuses all the time. I'm inclined to trust him here. Yeah, we've also got Dainty Tess who came out of that race. Two starts ago for Dainty Tess. Damien Oliver rode on that occasion. She was very gallant with 58 and a half on her back. Look, no d disrespect to Sarah Bonner, but she's not Damien Oliver. And I also don't really like the trip here. I think Dainty Tess is a thousand metre Yeah, horse. I'd have to agree with you there. Uh, 1,100 metres looks to be her go. The other one that piques interest there is number seven, Stored Energy for me. Barrier two might not be ideal because it is a run on horse, but she did run well as a two year old over 1,400 metres, which uh, suggests that this trip again, she should improve and then out to 1400 again, she will be strong to the line. Hopefully fitness is in her favour here. Look, I like the fact that she's back in trip, but uh, you know, seven starts on the track for one second, one third. In my numbers, but not on top. Yeah, for me, it looks to be enough speed for stored energy to win. I've got her on top. Ahead of number one, Dainty Test, the nine for a whisper and two, Night Watchman. I'm number four on top, Slick Sam from number nine, Fairy Whisper, number seven, Stored Energy and number one, Dainty Test. Race number three on the card at Ascot is the LWP Property Group Handicap. It's over 2,200 metres, the benchmark 66 plus, and the replay horse was mighty impressive and should only improve from that win. Maserati was the winner. Let's have a look at the replay. 
time and Dow Maidel in the straight big red cost of fathoms of gold but here comes Maserati letting down he hits overdrive on Maserati went to the lead a length and a half to Al Maidel it's running on in behind them the forgotten one but Maserati clear from Al Maidel Oliver draws the whip close to home and Maserati wins it by about a length Al Maidel Leading up to that win had shown really nice form behind the likes of Cronkite and even Kensington Abbey. They were very good runs. And last up, D Oliver on board certainly made the difference. Holding off fast finishing uh, our mate Al, who's also in this race. That horse is going along nice in the Ballantyne stable. Going very well at the moment. Mark, what do you make of Maserati firstly and then our mate Al? Look, I loved Maserati in that race. First time over ground, fastest last 200, run away from him. Absolutely excellent performance. I've got him on top in this race. And what about our mate Al Mark? Look, uh, look, no match for him late, uh, but he did. Uh, you know, his run was also a new PB. Certainly, in my numbers too. Number eleven, O'Reilly's Crump, but William Pike keeps the ride on this. Jeff Durant and Jason Miller train runner. They had a wonderful day on Wednesday, training two winners, and Pike rode a double as well. So good form. The only concern with this horse, he seems to be somewhat of a non-winner. His last win was in the lowly Two J Cup. No disrespect to that race, but it is only a fifteen thousand dollar race, and recently seems to be getting there or look like he's going to win but not quite 2200 meters again should get a very soft run from barrier two and be there right in the finish look two wins from 16 starts is somewhat of a concern and also i think he was outstayed in that last race too yes uh, my selections i've got o'reilly's crumper taking him on trust to get the nice soft run in the race and be there at the finish ahead of number three Maserati, four our mate al and one the forgotten one i'm number three Maserati from four our mate al number 11 o'reilly's crumpet and number two already famous Race number four here at Ascot is the Padbury Pharmacy Handicap over 1,100 metres. It's a benchmark 72 plus race and Mark, the last star winner, well, it was ridden by an apprentice and it ended up beating Douglas White on that occasion. He certainly did. Kate Fitzgerald rode the winner in town. Let's have a look at it. In town. Away then, the River and Roger, the Roman, and further two lengths behind them, Twisted Mountain being followed by Volkoff, who's trying to steer away through on the inside, Delicate Miss from Chinetti, and now the River as Douglas White draws the whip. It's the River coming up on the outside of Delicate Miss. They're going stride for stride, Delicate Miss, the River. They hit it, there was nothing in it. Yes, Delicate Miss, of course, is the galloper that we speak of. This mare by Maya De Canter, a well-bred mare as well. A half to, of course, Dawn Approach, who won over $500,000, and she was just too strong in the end. It was a really good ride by the apprentice, Kate Fitzgerald. A few in this race that come out of those form lines. Uh, one of those, of course, is Volkov. Now, it was running on strongly. It, drops in uh, it dropped in class on that occasion from Group 3 to 72, and now it's still in 72. The apprentice makes all the difference here for mine, Mark. Oh, look, I've got Volkov in my numbers, also got Delicate Miss in my numbers, but the person, I've, the horse I've got on top is, uh, is Furious Dame. If, if in doubt, go with William Pike. You know, very honest mare, definitely going to give a good psych, and when you've got the, uh, the assistance of Pike on board against a few apprentices here, that's the one I want to be on. Tell us from a numbers point of view, Mark, Volkov and Delicate Miss, what chance do you give them, or what rating do you give them? Look, I think this is a very, very even race, and as I said before, look, you know, in a very even race, go with the best jockey, and the best jockey in Perth is William Pike. William Pike there for Mark Furious Dame. I'm going with the five on top, Volkov. She looks to be the class mare here by Time Thief. Ahead of number 11, Viking Forest. Doesn't want any further than the 1,100 metres of this race. Number seven, Furious Dame will lead and give a very nice sight and number 10 distant memory. I'm number seven Furious Dame from number five Volkov, number 11 Viking Forest and number six Delicate Miss.